Hello. Hello, listeners, watchers, people on the internet. Um, welcome to the show, Born Under Punches. Um, it's a show that has sprung a leak and somehow fixed it with straw. So um, my name is Nicole. I'm your shape-shifting host for the evening. Um, but I'm really only kidding. I'm not Nicole, but I am a shapeshifter. Uh, my name is Paige. Uh, I just want to give a quick... Uh, content warning this episode will contain sexual content if that is not your jam put the lid back on put it back in the fridge um with that out of the way i'd like to invite the co-host out today um someone who should come with a content warning himself uh kelly come on out See, I, I would dispute the assertion page that erotica is inherently sexual sometimes it's just about energy mm. erotic energy yeah mm -hmm. which is i mean it, i think it's still good to give it a content warning but i do i do make ah, just a quick heads up you know just like this is gonna be in here if this is not again not your jam put it back in the fridge for right. later and speaking of jamming yeah now we did we did promise or at least imply that there would be cowboy erotica tonight um who? and what who did who implied well, that some of us whoever's writing all the discord posts it, it could be anyone really could be it's um, probably the person who has his hands on the wheel at all times yeah well you know you don't type discord posts with a wheel most people use a keyboard right a keyboard like the one used to write uh wild for cowboy the the planned piece of erotica for tonight. But oh. Someone, someone with their hands on the wheel decided that maybe we should call an audible tonight because we did get this book through Nicole. It's very special to her. It is her baby and she was not able to be here tonight. Mm. Uh, and so I'm actually going to just take an executive decision, make a bait and switch, and we will not be reading Cowboy Erotica tonight. A hands on the wheel uh, decision. But what? A hands on the wheel decision. Yeah. Well, you know, once in a while you Man. have to like, you know, it's like when you're going down the highway and you kind of, it's a, your, your car's tracking really well. You're going straight and you know, you kind of just, you just get, you get your knee there. Right. And you just kind of, your hands are free to, you know, smoke your cowboy cigarette or maybe just kind of like, you know, scratch yourself if you need to. But every once in a while you get those rumble strips blah, 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 and you got to, Hands back on the wheel, just for a moment, right? Straighten it back out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, costume change then? I I don't know. This was the only hat I had nearby, so I know oh. it's not exactly cowboy, but yeah, since no, you're changing. I mean, this, this gimmick was entirely to lull people into a false sense of security. Or a false sense of howdy. We'll workshop that one. Oh. Uh, what I prepared, I thought... I would prepare a special piece of erotica for our special guest hmm. uh, because we're having something of, I don't know, I guess you'd call it like a crossover episode between the, uh, I guess I'll spoil the guest, um, the ocean scientific nature of our guest and the uh, extremely scientific oceanic nature of our current role playing campaign. Ah, uh, fair. Two worlds so, collide. Yeah, so I don't know how I, I was going to just come out cold reading the uh, extremely well edited piece of erotica that I wrote in the past 30 minutes. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's your show, Paige. So do you want to invite the guest first or or just kind of have them wait in the wings while we while we go through this paragraph by paragraph? I would love to have someone to go through this with me. So let's uh, invite out our guest. Uh, Sarah. <laughs> this is pretty excellent. Oh yeah. Not bad. It's very danceable. It feels like, yeah, it feels like the peak of game shows back when all of the cast members were like small time celebrities who made really inappropriate jokes about all the guests. Ooh. Yeah. And is that not what you are? 
We'll find out. <laughs> I mean, we can put you on the spot right away. We can shove the erotica. What's your most I really resent being asked to come on uh, so quickly just to be a buffer between Paige and the erotica. <laughs> I, I mean, we understand can, we can it. Get Paige out I of the mix completely. It, but I resent it. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I can accept that. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy the same. you're here. Yeah, I'm happy you're here. <laughs> I, I believe it was uh, Machiavelli who said it is better to be resented uh, and respected rather than loved. Or I'm pretty like sure that. that was Marilyn Monroe. I mean, wasn't Machiavelli just the Marilyn Monroe of his day? Upskirts all day, every day. Yeah. Who is that? <laughs> so my my pitch was going to be that we could actually just remove Paige entirely for a minute so that there's there's no buffer at all. Just sort of We both need the buffer. To use the polite yeah. term, we would just we would just be raw dogging this story. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to to duck out dog the raw dog out, I don't know. No, I let's get this You're happy to raw gaga. Would you like to elaborate on that? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. You'll find out later when we start role playing. Okay. Kelly, lay it all on the floor and stomp on it like grapes. That was I, exactly what my plan was, word for word. So this story is a uh, you know, it's called a little piece of fan fiction because I'm a fan of Josh's work and this is really his world. So this piece oh. of erotica stars what I would call the unwitting hero of our current campaign, <laughs> um, the character I play, Smegma Glans, uh, which for for new viewers just joining us is uh, it's an Atlant traditional Atlantean name meaning calm, blessed one. Mm. Should I do a voice for it or just my voice? I think you have to uh, do a voice for it. The voice, yeah, yeah. What's what's like an erotic audiobook voice? Sort of like a like a husky, oh, like a David Attenborough. David Attenborough. Does he nice. read a lot of erotica audiobooks? I mean, you have to look really hard to find them, but they're out there. Ooh. Um, I was thinking your character voice. Yeah, you know what? Oh, that's such a it's such an unsexy voice, though. It's very What? I'm just gonna Don't I'm I'm gonna go Say that about your voice that you made for Smegma Glance. He's a pretty awful character. Um e but uh no I'm, gonna, I'm just going to draft completely <laughs> off the board here, and I'm going to go with sort of a weird, like, mid-Atlantic or transatlantic thing. Trans. And Smegma glands leaned laconically over the side of the boat. He had a casual look about him, a sort of effortless veneer that he spent years honing. The captain was barking at him over his shoulder. Something about maritime safety. His boat, his rules. It was at least the fourth or fifth time Smegma had heard this lecture and was taking in none of it. It was the sea that called to him, or rather, it was the promise of what was rumored to lurk just below the surface of the waves. In contrast to the gruff, disheveled, almost cartoonishly stereotypical sea captain, Smegma stood out starkly. He was handsome, yes, almost generically so, sort of an Atlantean Josh Hartnett, if you will. Or an Atlantean Andrew Garfield for you whippersnappers out there. Andrew Gar Andrew But it was Garfield. his style that really sold his look. He was as norm core as they came, always wearing the trendiest mainstream streetwear. Diesel jeans, possibly H&M shirts. Definitely a bunch of recognizable brands that I would know if I had been in a mall in the past decade. Smegma chose his moment carefully. He had watched the old man's patterns all day. Rigging masts, battening hatches, swabbing decks. He knew exactly when the crusty mariner would be below decks and hurriedly vaulted himself overboard before he could second-guess himself or lose his nerve. He hoped to Poseidon this was indeed the right place. Is he and still wearing jeans and a button-up? Ooh, yeah, ouch. Oh, the character? Yeah. Oh, God, I'm also doing that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Good to know. Smegma yeah. Lands does not wear utilitarian clothing for anything. Excellent. He hoped to Poseidon this was indeed the right place, and to his relief, as soon as he had passed the point of no return over the railing, he began to hear her song. We began Almost to as chafing. if by instinct, he began swimming the moment he hit the water. He didn't know where he was going, but he felt himself pulled there. Before he knew it, he sat on a sandbar before the siren calling to him. She was more beautiful than he even imagined. 
Even the most deranged, feet-focused Reddit subreddits could not compare to what he now saw planted in the sand, holding up the kind of legs a 50s pinup could only dream of. And the scales, oh, the scales from waist to head, the absolute platonic form of the top half of a fish. He stepped forward boldly, but still gently. He took in her nude form, noting the only scrap of coverage hiding any part of her body. The smallest, tiniest tuft of seaweed, just large enough to cover the naughtiest bits down below. His eyes darted from it to her own fish eyes, back to the kelp. He cleared his throat to offer his best line. <clears throat> you know, I'm on the seaweed diet. That's it. That's the whole. Thank God. You'll have to. Uh, you'll have to pay for the rest of the story. Uh, that's yeah, that's I bonus content. There was a does, lot of preamble there. Yeah. Does I the was fish? To... Yeah. Go ahead. Does it hey. have pubes? Do does she have pubes? Um. Does she shave? What would she use to shave? It's hard to say because it was under the seaweed. You know, it's sort of like that. But how small was the se that's? How yeah. small was the seaweed that it was still covering it's like up? Big old seaweed bush. Yeah. And then a bush under that. Yeah. 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 Too, well, too I mean, the text says big too enough to cover curious. the naughtiest bits. So I don't know if we need to go through the bits to determine exactly which Ooh. ones are the naughtiest. Are her pubes tangled up? Are those the knots? Oh. It's a good question. I mean, these these I can all work in as notes for the next draft. I right, also got right. a quick question about the fish eyes. Like, so she mm. top half is halibut. The eyes are on the same side. So you can look into the both of them at the same fish. time. Yeah. That does like, work. You know, regular fish has got much like these headphones, right? Oh, yeah. It's good visual. Eye on the one each side of the face. Maybe he's, he's, so he gets to both of them. Maybe. Is, we need, is we need more preamble. Only... You gotta add to it now. Yeah, I know too much about the captain, not enough about the siren. Yeah. Well, as I was about to write it, Paige was saying, like, you know, I don't want a whole bunch of sexual scenes. And I was like, or That's... that was what I was getting from it. And I was like, well, maybe we can kind of just, maybe we can just tease that part, you know? It's felt less like a tease and more like a threat. That would be my, mm. um, my final comment. <laughs> 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 yeah all right i'll take that note i'm not gonna do anything with it but i'll definitely take it thank you yeah perfect good yeah so is is a halibut like my only option for a fish that you can look at both eyes at once there are other flat fish Ooh, it could be like a barrel uh there's a fish called a barrel eyed something where the eyes are on top of its head mm. huh. so you could have that for the top half and then if she's sitting like torso sitting up and so like the eyeballs would both be like pointed directly out but when she's swimming oh i guess they'd be at the back of their head yeah so you'd have to turn around and then she'd be, be able to see at the back of their head yeah mm. well maybe, maybe she's doing that like comic book like female comic book character pose with like you know they bend the spine at the impossible angle oh, yeah so you can like oh, okay. see the face but Ooh. also the ass what if but like it's... a hagfish so almost eel like <laughs> what is happening here <laughs> <laughs> something is happening i feel like that's exactly how i picture smegma glands honestly. yeah 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 i was just thinking about that yeah <laughs> pretty generic um <laughs> is there a wiki how article for how to please your like half fish lover if there isn't there should be we can work on it yeah i guess yeah start it now and finish it later yeah, we could co-create it right now. We could throw out the entire concept of interview and just start writing this manual. Can you right. go, like, make your own wiki how pages? Is there a wiki how to make, to yes. teach you how to make a wiki how? Oh, there how? has to be. It's wikiception. <laughs> see, if I had my hands on the wheel, I would try to drag these windows around to see what else we can reveal from this picture, but I don't. I mean, when you drag the pictures around, they just end up switching i don't right. know if it's still the same like it doesn't Ooh, you get a little glimpse though you get a real mm. real quick glimpse we could like yeah we just need to shuffle forth. them really fast yeah a bit of a tease again yeah now i'm disoriented I'm in the opposite corner there we Boop. go I'm back where i belong mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh what is <laughs> well well i see scales yeah i see lips oh 
Well, I also see the smaller version what kind of, of it. Since it's on the like corner of my screen here. I can see what it is in the small version. It looks very much just like a goldfish on top of a uh, on top of a dude. I hope it's kind of cool. I hope yeah. you're having a nice night. Yeah, Hard well, no, say. WikiHow's policies are are very like tightly regimented in terms of the like every activity in a WikiHow image needs to be like canonically yeah. consensual. Yeah. You have to write it into the metadata, like the the backstory of why it happened, even if they're just like building a shelf. Like for every WikiHow article, there's a separate related article, WikiHow to get consent to start this project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why they'll and that's why they'll never sell for billions. They're just they're right. they're shooting that's themselves right. in the foot. If anything, I think that would be good because it's multiple products for it's a better structure than Twitter, to be honest. Eh. Oh, 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 okay, that's good. I'm so glad <laughs> we, we miss her. I, we miss her. I'm so glad we <laughs> oh, have our audiences like... to fill in the jokes that we can't. Mm -hmm. In the South, like in the American South, people will do something called, I think it's noodling, is when they use their hand to like catch catfish. And then it does look like they're just sort of fisting a catfish's mouth. Like when they do the tickling thing? I don't think they, I think they just hold bait in their hand. They put down like, down in the like, water and a catfish like slurps onto their hand that actually I've just like oh yeah it's like, just like you can look fish up, up to here fish up yeah, to here like all the way fish up to... depending on the size of the catfish wow i didn't yeah, know like you're not going on the other side how much more play you go through right? ahead of time mm. oh, right important. that's what the tickling is maybe like yeah well, I, maybe Maybe this depends on how like generous of a fisherman you are, Will, or you know, fisher person, fisher. You can you can be any kind of fisher, honestly. There's a wiki how for all of it. Yeah. So this oh, actually no. segues beautifully into the first question I had written down for you, which is. It shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> well, then we'll jump to the second question, which is, uh, which fish, which fish is the most erotic? <laughs> which. Fist. Honestly, Fish. wow, that's a big question, though. What do you like? Part of it is like looking at taxonomy. Like, what do you consider a fish? Right, because obviously mammals aren't fish, but are like, is a cephalopod a fish? Because a cuttlefish oh. is the most erotic animal. They love to cuddle. They're all about the foreplay. But are they a fish? See, I, I was hoping name, you were though. here to tell us what a fish is, because I'm like... not a marine biologist. I feel like I'm less popular of one. conception. Are, are there are there a few maybe just so we have everything clear? Are there a few other jobs you want to like firmly establish that you're not? Oh, I am not a garbage collector, but I mm -hmm. wish I were. That would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am not. I do not work in sewage plant processing, but I did apply for an interview for a job at one once. But that's mm. it. Anything else is up in the air. I could do it. See, it's interesting you say you're not a garbage collector because you could have self set yourself up for an incredible joke of like, you know, not counting my exes. Hey, no, I don't collect them. I have to work very hard to get them to stop contacting me. Oh. Do you want to run us through the wiki how for that? That would be a good one. Yeah. We'll work on that. Safety tips. Got one? Oh, whenever they email you, tell them under no circumstances to ever contact you again, and then you've got yourself at least like three years before they forget all about that email you anyways. I mean, three years is as long as an email lasts, right? Like you have to you have to re email every three years anyway for just to just to check. Yeah. You know? You never know. It's been about ten years since we last saw each other, maybe. Eh? Okay, so I feel like we've kind of lost the thread there. I, I'm still not certain what a eels. fish is. Eels are probably the most sexual and sexy, like, classical fish. Okay. Classical yeah. fish. Like, are there, are there new fish, like Pokemon? Like, it's just, like, a new set of fish? Well, it's less like, like, you have the classical fish, like, just a prototypical fish. That's going to be, honestly, I think an eel counts as much as other people might argue about that. We also don't know where they fuck. They're very shy heard that and that's yeah i think we're working on it science is getting there trying to put cameras in eel dens doing Setting our best up, yeah pumping in a bunch of like soft beats for them 
See yeah. if they can set the mood just right. <laughs> would like would you say they're shy or prudish or have you looked at an eel? You know I don't think they're prudish. I I meant to look at an eel. It was like number one on my task list of preparing for you being on the show. And like again, it's the ADD thing. I go to look at an eel and the next thing I know, I'm thinking, Stop oh, playing. I need to, you know, jokingly change Josh's name on Discord. And then I'm trying to remember how to spell the name of these, like, you know, right wing political chuds in Alberta. And then I'm like hate reading the Twitter profile. And, you know, then I'm posting it on a different Discord server and I've completely forgotten about the eels. It's tragic. I think that's also what happens every time scientists try to figure out where eels fuck, to be fair. <laughs> Because where I was going with the question is I'm trying to think, like, for some reason I'm picturing, you know that whole, like, Mormon sheet thing? Is oh, it yeah. Mormons? Uh, it's, I don't know if that ever actually was a thing, but the, the rumor is definitely about Mormons. But, like, with eels, it would just be one hole, and the entire eel would still be going through the hole. Wait, wait, wait what kind of, do we know what kind of genitals they have? Functional what kind? Ones? Yeah, well, cause like, you know, you've got your you got your famous your classic weird dick animals. You got ducks, right? You got cats. Sure. Uh, you got the the bed bugs that have the weird like uh, weaponized hypodermic stab dicks. Oh, that's really common in a lot of uh, fish, like ovipositors. So like yeah. the lady has it, or the female parts fish has a. No, it's dick. usually the the sperm. Like, oh. and then with some bed bugs, and then with some fish, it's not even like into a cloaca or like any kind of like hole. It's just like well, approximately where you're like where the eggs are gonna be. I'm just gonna stab through your flesh a little bit and then pump a bunch of sperm in there. Right. Here's this for later. You're welcome. That's right. Yeah. 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 Like in the bed bug one, they like I believe they like crack open the chest entirely. It's like it's what? super brutal. Yeah, I think it's. Is it fatal? No, it can't be. That doesn't work. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't brush up on bed bugs either, to be honest. I don't know. I don't, I'm sure eels just have, like, something like a cloaca. Well, yeah, that was, that was the next example I was thinking of. Like, do eels just have a cloaca? Like, like would they be close to what snakes have? Because, like, I just, oh, it's like, like... Do that whole deal? Yeah. Because I'm thinking if you're... If you're an, like you got two animals, they have right. cloacas. Are they the same kind of animal. Okay, two animals. I'm both thinking of have two cloaca? eels. I'm no, just... no, no. So a cloaca is like where eggs come out and also poop and also pee. Yeah. It's so everything so, hole. Yeah, it's the everything hole, but it is mostly for like female animals. So I thought species uh, with cloacas is just like both of their biological sexes. They have cloacas. They do the cloacal kiss, and everything just interacts. Oh, that could be. I'm not a biologist. I have heard well, of we're becoming that term for some reason before. Yeah. Cloacal kiss sounds like sounds Legit. so romantic. Yeah. Oh, oh I think yeah. I say like a metal band name. No, not quite. Maybe like hair metal. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure that's what birds slash dinosaurs do. I learned it from reading dinosaur comics, so that, that has to be why. I just like imagine if you like, I don't know. Like, humans are always told, like, oh, like, you can't get pregnant from, like, dry humping or heavy petting or whatever. And, like, you're some <laughs> sort of, like, bird who's, like, managed to figure out human speech and go to human sex ed. And you're like, oh, this is fine. I can totally, like, bump cloacas. And we're not, not going to get pregnant. We're not going to get pregnant. We're just scissoring here. And then next thing you know. Whoops. Yeah, I imagine, like, just bumping cloacas, like, you know, often. It's like a right. fist bump. Yeah. Yeah, I, I sort of imagine that as the, the equivalent like a congratulatory of. congratulatory. What's that actual kiss. practice? It's their version of soaking, right? You know, soaking? No. Yeah. Explain. Well, another if Mormon I was thing. five years old, please explain soaking. Oh, if we were five years old, we would not be explaining soaking. Try. As, just try. As sex positive as I am, I think that's... Uh, so it's another It's another thing with, uh, with Mormons, with people who like are in the Church of Latter-day Saints, where sex only counts if there's movement or something. God is like a T-Rex in the first Jurassic Park and can only see you sitting if there's movement involved. So mm -hmm. they'll do like, they'll do P and V, but as long as he's not thrusting, did, did you fuck? 
So you, uh? so it's like on a swing, like one. Sometimes there's, I've heard there's of it. Moving apparatuses. No, usually they're just like laying in bed, I guess. And then there was a thing that came out more recently at uh, Brigham Young University, like the main Mormon university in Utah, mm-hmm. where I couldn't tell if it was like confirmed or not. But it's a bunch of like very religious kids in college, or like a. A person with a penis and a person with a vagina would be soaking. They would just be mm-hmm. laying like face to face. And then a friend would yeah. jump on the bed next to them to create some amount of motion. <laughs> just like mm-hmm. the ultimate wingman, really. It's so pretty... it's like you're like double bouncing them on a bed. Yeah. 100%. So they can fuck. Yeah, because a loophole is as long as you're not doing the motion. Yeah. Because that's, that's what I was always wondering. <laughs> so it's, is like, like... it's like popcorn. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh, like you try to hang on and the person's trying to bounce you up? <laughs> like latched onto each other? Yeah. yeah. But like frozen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you need to be holding onto each other because the whole point is not to move, right? So. Would that count as a threesome? Because you have a third person involved with the sex. But if it counts as a threesome, that third person is moving, then it's not soaking anymore. What even is a sin, you know? I wonder what how many Mormon is. couples have been thwarted when they're like, all right, we've convinced, we've gotten a third, we've gotten a unicorn to come bounce the bed for us. <laughs> but like, you know, maybe like their you know, their parents bought them this, you know, mattress because they're rich Mormons or whatever. Oh, and they got these Tempur-Pedic mattress. mattresses <laughs> where you, like, you put the wine glass on it and you can't, you can't <laughs> fuck it up. Foiled. Yeah. That would be a really that good way to market those two Mormon That would parents. sell you some. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't sell it to Mormon college kids, but it would sell it probably to everyone else. <laughs> would the commercial be two people? It might sell it to like like Mormon college kids who want to have sleepovers and then also soak where it's like, look, your friends can be on the other side and trying desperately to have not sex and you can sleep like a baby. That'd be fine. Yeah. You won't even notice it. <laughs> not sex. <laughs> yeah, I feel like eels could have an equivalent. That's right. uh, more mans a more a more man is like a, a combination between a mormon and a merman awful so it's like a mormon half mormon half fish mm. but Last it's half mormon yeah it's right, a side to side fish. Yeah. <laughs> wait isn't utah like i feel like there could be an eel equivalent to soaking utah right kind of middle yeah because you know how like i mean they're know, always your... soaking they're in the water Mm, yeah yeah but like yeah. so wetter than and, usual right oh another point wet. wetter than usual would be a really good tagline for something i don't know what wetter than usual that should just be your <laughs> podcast tagline <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of we might as well plug that right now you oh, do yeah. a podcast oh I yeah we sometimes. never really introduced you yet did we <laughs> oh, I, this is the right way to do it i think i said a name somewhere yeah this is sarah I and Sarah know. does a podcast. I do called a podcast. "It Came from the Sea." Yeah, and it's wetter than usual. It's wetter than usual. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. Yeah, I. Whoop. Thank you. Um, See, that could be bonus content, right? It's a kind of like a side cast. Like it came in the sea, and that's the <laughs> that's the wetter than usual version. A branch that would off. Be yeah. Really good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> there was an episode where one of my co-hosts he just really likes Moby Dick. And I don't. Sure. I hate it. I think it's just a very boring piece of literature. That's me, though. Um, and so he wanted to talk about it, and he asked me to like look up stuff about whaling. So I like looked up some stuff about like sperm whales and whaling. But he mostly just wanted to talk about whale cum the whole time. Mm. So that well, he like, wanted you to feel whale cum in <laughs> the episode. <laughs> What? Wait, he was the, the podcast that I host. Wait. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I don't, have you ever had that experience? You feel like unwelcome in your own home, like some just <laughs> weird person is there. I literally shared a house with my ex-husband for several months. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Okay, can I? <laughs> can I yeah. finally? I, I I'm really proud of this idea. What so, idea? You've got eels and they're they're prudish or they're shy or they're Mormon or whatever, right? Sure. So same you know same you've you've got the classic <laughs> glory hole, which is like in well, even that's what the sheet is, right? It's a hole in the sheet yeah. for your external genitalia to pass through, right? Into the internal genitalia, yeah. Right. But if you both have cloacas and you're trying um, to 
you're trying to also like trying to appease your fish eel mormon god you could kind of get a reverse glory hole which is sort of just like a little pipe that goes through the sheet and you both kind of place your cloacas on it and it's like kind of like a that's, double ender you can stimulate yeah, each other so through the sheet a dildo. but there's no cloaca to cloaca contact like and so it's not tube? a sin in the eyes it's of poseidon hollow? or whoever you Is mean it for it to be hollow um well i feel like it's hollow if you're trying to do insemination is it still insemination is that the term yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's it's if you're just doing it for pleasure then it's just like a it's like a dowel right a dowel <laughs> A or just a regular double ender. Or I don't know why dildo. it has to have such yeah. a like a plain shape. <laughs> Using a dowel as a double ended dildo sounds like when you get tampons that are in like a cardboard tube. It's too dry. It's too scratchy. <laughs> at least yeah, sand I, it down. I totally yeah, relate. <laughs> a bit of varnish, something to seal it up. I mean, it hopefully wouldn't be dry because you are underwater. Oh, right. I don't know if having it soggy would be better at that point. Yeah. Well, definitely not so if it's soft, cardboard. Also, would dowel soak in salt water using <laughs> a double ended dildo? Ooh, yeah, the salt up in there. I don't know. Not my first choice, but I'm not an eel Mormon. Kelly's the author here, so it's up to you to write mm. this write this fan fiction. Oh yeah, that's what this is for. Is that what this is for? Oh, I don't know. Dis- I don't remember. Well, does Spank McGlans mm. have a cloaca? I heard Spank McGlans. <laughs> I did too. What? No, it's Smegma. Right, Smegma right. Smegma is his cousin. Yeah. He's got a lot of cousins. It's, uh, he, he's an Atlantean Mormon, so that's kind of... They got big families down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of cousins, a lot of sisters. Sometimes there's overlap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sisters. Well, like, your, your dating pool in Atlantis is really small. You know, it's kind of like Iceland, except you can't even leave, necessarily. Because I don't know, because I guess you reveal the secret. Trade of embargoes, yeah. Well, I think in I, you know, maybe we'll have to get Josh to confirm this for us, but I believe his version of Atlantis that we're this is the one we're talking about. I believe it's in a dome. It's got. Oh, I don't want to spoil anything. Because there was some early confusion as to whether is it or wet? not is it dry atlantis or wet atlantis well this, this is exactly usual. where we were confused because we got about like i think three episodes in and we were trying to figure <laughs> out whether our characters like had gills or breathed or what right and i believe what we landed on is it's a dome underwater okay and it's so that creates an air pocket but it's okay. also has a bunch of water in it so if you have gills okay. you can be under the water yeah i mean that's like that's like disney's atlantis that's a similar uh-huh. setup there. In the Little Mermaid? No, 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 no. In the movie Atlantis. Oh, right. Yeah, yes. the the Little Mermaid is just there's not really a city, is there? There's just like the weird. Oh, there's King a castle and stuff. Yeah. I thought that was Atlantis as well. Am I just that like was Atlantis. making that? No, up? that was Atlantis. Oh, okay. the, yeah. He's Multiple or Disney Atlantis. Gotcha. Oh, All canonically the same somehow. Knowledge. Obviously. One is the fallen version later on. I don't know. But this is what you could tell us because you are an oceanographer, right? Or I studied oceanography. Right. Yeah. So like Atlantis, where is it? It's in the Atlantic Ocean. In the middle of it, there is actually a place called Atlantis, but it's just a bunch of uh, uh, tubes. It's a bunch of tubes, a bunch of rock tubes. Vents. There we go. It's a bunch of hydrothermal. Oh, vents. is it? Like, it's like that Bioshock city that's all tubes. I wish. Like Atlantis is just like a weird failed libertarian project. Yeah, that's where we shipped Ayn Rand when she got boring. Um, <laughs> no, there is like I don't know. Like one of the teachers that I had at uh, in my undergrad actually was on the team that discovered this like like previously unknown like massive set of hydrothermal vents, and they named it Atlantis because they're a bunch of nerds. Hmm. I would have named yeah. it Tube Land. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So yeah. is there a dome there or? No, yeah. just like tubes and weird looking shrimp. Okay, Ooh. so we're off on the wrong foot for, for scientific accuracy is what you're saying. I think you might have some like some areas you could improve a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, like maybe we should just get out ahead of it. Is there anything else important we need to know about Atlantis? 
so that maybe we can kind of try and retcon the story before we even start. Yeah, unfortunately, their entire system of government is based on, like, a religious oligarchy. Hmm. Which religion? Is it more that underwater Mormonism? I'm going to say yes, just because I completely blanked it, could not think of a weirder religion to equate it to. Shenyun, <laughs> no, it's all based off of Shenyun, that, um, that Chinese cult that goes around and does massive dance recitals, but then also tries to recruit people to their cult through these, like, big, elaborate dance performances. Two for one. Oh. So, like, Falun Gong, but more fun? It's, so it's related to Falun Gong. Falun Gong does the Shenyun... Um, Falun Gong is the cult. Shen Yun is the performance. Oh, okay. It's so like it's the same how... thing. I'm learning yeah. new stuff here today, so this is all new to me. Yeah, and all of that, but underwater, there isn't a dome, there isn't a city. It's hydrothermal vents. Funky shrimp. Funky shrimp. Um, they do chemosynthesis, so there's no sunlight at all. We just have to sort of like lick minerals off the rocks. Okay. Are they easy so to look So shrimps off, with tongues. Oh yeah, we are gonna have to have like some way of slurping minerals off of rocks. Mm. Proboscis. Ooh, proboscis. Yeah. Ooh. Where do I get a proboscis? I like I, that. This is another thing. This is kind a of straw. going off. A You're straw is a proboscis. Canada, you have the real healthcare, so. <laughs> a straw is a probos proboscis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but they're all paper now. They don't a work in the ocean. <laughs> the they're... entire population of Atlantis is collapsing because they can't use plastic straws anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe I'm sure there's that's plenty still in there. Maybe that's actually what happened to them because I feel like the, you know, some of the writings of what was it? Was it Plato? It was one of those guys. Was, like... I think it was Plato or Ptolemy. One of those guys. Yeah, I feel like they were a bit fuzzy. So maybe that was sort of. Like, maybe when they switched to plastic straws, like, the ancient Greeks lost the ingredients for plastics, kind of like, you know, the Greek fire and oh. the Damascus, Damascus steel, the concrete. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got it from the Atlanteans. And, like, we're clearly about to lose it again, because where everyone's on this about, you know, getting rid of plastic, and it's the end of Western civilization. They were right. Derek Fildebrandt was right. I should follow his Twitter. I'd be okay with that. Could we do a it hard being the pivot? end of Western civilization. Oh, I was like, fine. you'd be okay with Kelly following this guy's Twitter. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that too. do you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we do a hard jarring tonal shift into a sincere question? Yeah. Ocean plastic, what's the deal? That wasn't worded okay. like a sincere question. <laughs> no, I will expound because there <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I, I did my homework. I did listen to oh. uh, a few extra episodes of It Came From The Sea, uh, name of the podcast for plugging. And so there was one where you were saying something along the lines of like that o or like ocean plastic in general or microplastics or one of them was like not necessarily as threatening to oh, marine life yeah. or something. Um, so it's not hmm. plastic is complicated because plastic has like in addition to just becoming like a real fucking problem. Um, it's also really necessary for a lot of things, like for medicine uh, and science generally, like being able to have plastics you can pretty cheaply make and throw away is really important. Um, so I don't want to say that plastic isn't like plastic isn't evil, but plastic also isn't like completely benign. Um, but as long as the plastic isn't coated in certain types of chemicals that are going to make like they're just going to fuck with you because they're chemicals. And they're small enough that an animal doesn't choke on them. Uh, a lot of times, microplastics in particular, the really small plastics, will just sort of like pass through a fish. Um, it's just like filler. Right. right. It's just like if, you know, if you were to eat a penny, you'd poop a penny out. It wouldn't just get like, it wouldn't kill you. I mean, maybe um, you would. Yeah, it wouldn't feel different. good. <laughs> Built different. Your anus is so tight that, that penny yeah, would actually I, kill you. I pride myself on that. Like <laughs> I am at the club and I'm leaning into people and I'm like, listen, you put a penny in me, it's not coming out, and I wink. <laughs> From the top, not the bottom, because you can't That's even right. get it in the bottom. That's right. Yeah. It must take uh, you a long time to poop, but we can talk yeah. about that later. No, no, no. It's still a good way of flirting because like I what, what? I'm saying is nothing's <laughs> just gonna come out. 
but you can get it in with lubrication. You're just making sure they know that anal leakage, not a problem with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like that's like 90%. That's a concern. Well, it's a thing we're looking for, but it's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, I would say prudishness in the like the world of dating apps because I have not found a single app yet that like they'll you, you can pick your pronouns, you can pick your religion, you can pick your like whether or not you drink, do drugs, whatever, but you cannot specify the like amount uh, or like your risk of anal leakage. You can't like there's, I feel like there's that no might drop be kind down of discriminatory to towards people like people who have anal leakage, you know? They didn't choose that life. Didn't they? <laughs> I don't know. Like, how do we know? Well, you ask, I guess. But like, does that want to be your opening line for every single message you sent? Is uh, so? What's your deal with any leakage? Or, well, like, uh, we, full or natural, natural and I got no to, drips. Yeah, like, you can list your height on there. Like, you know, short people, right. tall people. They didn't choose that life either. But then there's like, you know, the box that you fill in yourself. You can put your funny little quips in, or you can put. You're Wetter than usual, no anal yeah. leakage. Right. Oh, or anal Which leakage. Which is like, that one-two combo is a hard, uh, like, needle to thread, but if you can do it, like, you're covering Wetter all your than bases. usual, not where you'd expect. <laughs> Wetter than usual in the back. <laughs> Wetter than usual in just the right places. <laughs> okay, but... Wetter than usual on command, right? Like... Turn it on and off like a fountain. <laughs> <laughs> right, just like menstruation. That's how that works, too. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> we were doing so good. We were on a sincere okay, question, okay. and okay. somehow... It's, just, it's a big question. <laughs> what else? So, yeah, sometimes, sometimes plastic... <laughs> sometimes when plastic is swallowed by a large enough creature and it's a small enough piece of plastic, it will just, like, completely pass through them, and it's not really a problem. But in a lot of other cases, right, like there's other things that will happen where it won't get digested and it will sit in a stomach. Um, so if uh, mostly I think, I think it mostly comes up in birds or like marine creatures that are not fish for some reason because they have more complicated digestive tracts. Uh, plastic will get stuck in different areas where either physically it becomes a problem because they just think that they're full. So they starve to death because they have a stomach full of plastic and that's kind of well known because there's pictures of like oh we pulled all this out of a seagull's like seagull's stomach um you can find like pictures of like balls of plastic crap um but the other thing that will happen is most of the plastic that we use is treated with something so with clothing it's a big one where infant clothing in particular in the u.s and a lot of other countries it's legally required that it be flame retardant and so they'll coat it. It's not, it's not a great word, but it just means like resistant to flame. Um, mm. So it will be coated with chemicals to make it so that if, uh, you know, if there's an electrical spark near your baby's crib when they're asleep, instead of just like going up in a flash, it'll like smolder and kind of wear out. And like our clothing is mostly made out of plastic. So Right. So the crib is going to burn, but the baby inside the crib will be fine. At least the baby's onesie will be probably fine. Right. Um. And when you're looking at plastic that we use on beaches or just outdoors, a lot of it is treated to be resistant to UV breakdown because the sun will just make plastic really brittle and like fall apart. And so when that when those chemicals get into the water, if a fish eats a little bit of it or if you have like algae or plankton or like little little bits of barnacles or whatever, like latches onto that plastic, they'll actually leach those chemicals directly into their system. Um, and so if you, right, if you have a creature that needs to photosynthesize and it just leached a chemical that makes it resistant to UV rays, now that creature is like literally has a chemical in it that's like sunblock. So it just can't get the same kind of nutrients that it needs. The other thing these chemicals will do is they're called persistent organic pollutants, POPs. And the word organic there just means that they are shaped in such a way that they can take the place of like pre-existing molecules like way oversimplifying it but in the case of a fish that means that the material from that baby's onesie that made it resistant to flames might mimic some other kind of hormone that the fish would produce and so what we found is that 
as these chemicals leach off of the plastics into the water, into the fish, they're not producing the right kinds of hormones. So sometimes they're like their entire life cycle is just messed up where they're just like not reaching adulthood in the same way. Or when they reach adulthood, they're like uh, hormones control sex organs. So like their sex organs are now not properly developed because this other like artificial hormone kind of got in the way. And so, like, there's still, right, there's still massive issues with plastic in the ocean. It's just, like, the one that people think of, which is, like, oh, a fish is going to choke on a piece of plastic, um, is kind of, like, a really small part of it and not nearly as big of a problem as, as kind of, it, it's easy to portray it as because it is very visual. Yeah, I, I guess I, like, as a lay person who reads a lot of, I don't know, fish potentially erotica. alarmist, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> Who reads a lot of potentially <laughs> alarmist articles? Like, I, I guess I, I had it in my head that basically, the consensus on plastic was, is just doing like fifteen bad different things, and yeah, I, like I, I wouldn't have necessarily pegged it to fish. Like, I feel like that example of like the stomach full of it, like that happens with sea turtles or no? So. Sea turtles and whales yeah. are kind of the big ones that people will point to and be like, oh, this sperm whale like beached itself and had a stomach full of plastic. Or here's a picture of a sea turtle eating a plastic bag that looks like a jellyfish. Um, those happen. That definitely is a thing that we have found. That image of the sea turtle with a straw in his nose, right? Like that is a thing that occurred, but that is incredibly uncommon. Um, they just, most of the plastic in the ocean isn't in the shape of an entire plastic bag. It isn't, right, it isn't in a form where it's going to look like a jellyfish and something's going to eat it. That's just visually, if, you are, if you're if you trying to find shorthand to discuss with people, like, ooh, plastic's harmful, that was a really easy visual shorthand. And then you do have these um, charismatic mega, megafauna, uh, like these really cute looking animals that people like, where you can say, like, oh, we like need to protect the sea turtles. I described earlier, right? Like, Char she's very charismatic, charismatic as hell, yeah. She would do great in a job interview, I fully believe that. Um, and it does, it oversimplifies the issue, which becomes a problem. Then people focus on kind of the wrong aspects of like, well, what do we do about it? And then it also makes it really easy to be alarmist and to just be like, oh, well, there's, you know, we're just killing everything. Everything's doomed already. When I don't think either of those are like helpful, to be honest. Is there anything that because I know, I think you've touched on this as well uh, with the episode I was listening today, you mentioned it about carbon, where you kind of have to remember to preface your statement with, oh, you know, we should reduce our use of this, where we can do what we can as consumers, but there's so much more power in the hands of corporations, governments. So with that caveat still, um, is there something the average person can do to just like know whether they're plastic is like more or less harmful like in the ways that you mentioned or is it just not even labeled um it really like no essentially that's part of why that's part of why stuff like the idea of a carbon footprint which was actually like that whole concept of like your carbon footprint was made up by i want to say it was enron or exxon it was a big oil corporation and it was like their push to make it so people thought it was more of an individualist issue rather than Right, like corporations and governments who really need to do something. And when it comes to like whether plastic is recycled or not recycled, or just trying to track the sustainability of different plastics, the messaging on it and the laws around how it's labeled are so haphazard and so easy to get around that. Right, like you shouldn't you shouldn't be kind of going towards the like oh well this water bottle says it's made from recycled plastic so I'm only going to buy that one. Because it's probably not, to be honest. Um, if a company is doing that, especially like Coca-Cola, I think has like several initiatives right now where they're saying like, oh, we're going to make sure all of our Coca-Cola bottles, like from all of our products are recycled or made with recycled plastic. Most of the times re the reasons they're doing that is because it's more profitable for them somehow. So a lot of the plastic bottles that say they're made with recycled plastic, the reason that the companies are willing to do that is because they've found a way to make it profitable for them. Um, sometimes that means they've made it with less plastic, so it's lighter and it's cheaper for them to, to manufacture it. Sometimes they've managed to get plastic from someplace else that's like 
recycled, but also it's just maybe scraps from another plastic manufacturing plant. So instead of getting it, you know, you think you're getting like, oh, when I recycled a water bottle, now I'm buying a recycled water bottle. You think it's like a one for one, but that's almost never really the case. And it's like that's a certain not, percentage, like a small percentage. I think it's just the word recycled means, mm. right? It doesn't have one specific meaning when we talk about manufacturing, but it does have one specific like cultural understanding of what a recycled item is. Mm. Um, so it's, that's not to say like nobody should try to do anything, right? Like I do, I have a, re a reusable water bottle. I try to avoid plastic when I can, but that doesn't mean like, it doesn't make you better than anybody else if you can do that. Um, because accessibility is a big issue and it's not, that's not the thing that's going to like change the way the ocean is being polluted right now. That isn't something that like my individual purchasing is really going to impact. It's going to help me. It's going to make me feel a little bit better and a little bit more connected. Um, but people shouldn't be making these purchase changes, making these like lifestyle changes with the end goal of being just, oh, I'm bad. I'm not, I'm not part of the problem anymore. Um, and that's, that is, I think what I've seen from like when I used to have Instagram, you'd see like kind of lifestyle influencers talking about how, like how little plastic waste they use and that kind of being the, the end. It's kind of like, that's the, that's it. They did it. They did the thing instead of it being like, well, I'm going to reduce plastic because I care about that because I don't want to like be putting more plastic into the world. But also I'm going to try to make sure that I am aware when there are things on the books that I can vote for, or that I can like educate other people about, um, that will actually help with plastic reduction, like plastic waste. And where would that kind of land if like, I'm in the second category of those two people, but I'm also extremely smug about it on top of that. Um, that kind of... Yeah, I think that's a net negative overall, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the most called out I've ever been on uh, <laughs> on our show, but we'll have really? a soldier on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, we've, you know, we've only had so many guests. You'll be topped, I'm sure. I only hope I'm the start of something big, some new trend. All right. Did we cover it? I don't. I don't know what else to say. All right. There's well, a lot of good I, stuff. I uh, it 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 sparked this thing in my head, and I was like, "Oh, this will be another forty minutes of discussion if I get into it." And it's kind of beyond the purview of the the ocean stuff, really. But when you're talking about plastic recycling, that the understanding I'm sort of coming to with a lot of it is that really just the idea of recycling plastic, if you're going to like if you're gonna oversimplify it is that like it's broadly a scam or greenwashing i guess is a better term because so much of it is, is problem, yeah because yeah. even like where you, the plastic where you can effectively recycle it like in the way that you think you're melting it down you're um and you're you're making it to something new is but uh, i think pretty much every time it's like more energy intensive than to make new plastic which you're just kind of trading one ecological thing for another. I guess there's like, I'm probably going to forget. I have like three points floating around in the ether and like, I'm going to lose at least one of them. Um, the easiest one is, uh, I guess we'll get the Josh first... to put them on the screen as you go. And then I don't, they're already drifting. It's, it's so oh, hard. Shit. To I, I, did, I made it worse. I'm sorry. I'm going to just, um, the first one that's like the easiest to, uh, the easiest to just sort of like hit is that like people talk about recycling, but they kind of forget that like, the three R's are like reduce, reuse, recycle. And so like recycling is actually like the last part of that. And like when that sort of system came into place, when environmentalists were talking about reduce, reuse, recycle in the, I think the sixties and seventies is when they started that. Um, they meant it to be in that order. Like that was a very specific thing. Like you reduce the amount of things that you use. So you use reusable stuff when you can, you try not to get to go if you can help it. Um, and again, like that is all going to be completely based on it. It is very expensive to not get single use items. It is literally like not something many people can afford. Um, so if you can't afford it, it is not your fault. Essentially, like it is not your responsibility to try to, you know, work a budget that is barely working for you and also feel bad about having to use single use items. That's, that's just economics. It's shit and it's not your fault. 
um reuse is buying things right that you can reuse so if you get like a tub of something if i get like a tub of cottage cheese and the tub has an actual lid i'll reuse that right like it's not going to last as long as like if i bought something new but it'll still be fine for a lot of things so, like then you go to recycling so like recycling really isn't supposed to be the first step on this where that was another thing that a lot of corporations did um oh man cottage cheese is good though um uh corporations did work to kind of like make people forget about reduce and reuse because if you're reducing the amount of shit you buy and then reusing the shit that you do buy right like that's not profitable and so that's another thing where like it all sounds kind of like conspiracy until you find the memos from these corporations that are very much like well we need to like we need to find a way to like make this work for us um so then when we talk about recycling and the energy that it takes uh it is in the US and Canada in particular, it is very expensive to recycle. There are not enough recycling plants is a big part of it. And then um, I know it kind of in the US at least, it really depends on your county or your city. Like when I grew up, uh, we had bins, right? We had a plastic bin, we had a glass bin, we had an aluminum bin, we had a paper bin. Um, and depending on where I've lived, that's kind of the most separated that the US gets a lot of times, I don't have recycling in Hawaii. Hawaii barely has any areas that actually offer recycling services. Um, other areas, if you have recycling at all, it's like one big blue, blue bin and that's it. Um, but if you go to countries, um, like I lived in Japan and Korea for a while, they have not just like plastic glass paper, but the plastic is also separated into different types of plastic because that's a big deal. Um, you have to clean it. So there are countries where like you actually get fined by the like local like municipal government if you try to recycle plastic that is dirty. If you have like a yogurt cup you have, if you have a cottage cheese tub you haven't cleaned out, um, they'll fine you for it because those are the things sorting the different types of plastic and then cleaning them enough that they're actually able to recycle. That's where it's really expensive. Like that's where it takes the most energy and plastic isn't because plastic is so soft you can't you kind of just can't throw it all in like a really hot chemical bath and like clean it and it's good like things stick into it and then the chemical bath will start to break it down in ways that make it less able to be recycled fully whereas like with glass and aluminum you can just soak them in something really hot and like basically boil all of the food stuffs off of it and then recycle it it's not a problem so Plastic recycling is expensive. It is energy inefficient if we're doing it in that way. If we're just throwing a bunch of dirty plastics into a container outside where it's going to get really nasty and then sending it off to a recycling factory that doesn't have the facilities able to clean it. That's actually part of why um, China stopped taking a lot of plastic from the U.S. West Coast. We've been, sh been selling it to China to recycle. Part of it was there was too much, but a lot of it was that it would get to China and I cannot imagine how fucking disgusting this, like, like old milk jugs and stuff would have been after sitting in, like, your recycling bin outside for two weeks, and then in a dump somewhere for months, and then on a cargo vessel for weeks, and then they'd finally get to China, and it would just be fetid, uh, and they weren't able to recycle it. So that was, right, like, kind of the thing we were told was that the plastic was too much for them to use, but it was actually too dirty. Yeah, because that's sort of what happened here was, uh, like, at least in places I've lived, which is just like two cities in Alberta, but there was, in the last few years, basically this shift from, like, we're doing all this sorting to, you know, you're going to put it all in one bag and we'll right. sort it to, we're not even pretending anymore, just, yeah. like, we were not taking basically any plastic, and it's just more of, like, an acknowledgement of reality, but it sucks. It's still, if you have access to a recycling bin, um most areas that still do that it is still good to do it is still like it is good to put your site like to sort your recycling out when you can um because at the least then you have kind of your trash trash that isn't plastic is mostly compostable so if you have a dump that is mostly filled with not plastic it's still mostly going to be like food scraps and things that will break down over time paper um so you can put those in a landfill and it's not great, but at least at some point, you know, it will kind of like, it will break down in some way. It will compost at least to some degree. So if you have the plastic sorted out where you can just put the plastic in another facility, um, 
right? It's not great. There is some amount of like, well, maybe we'll be able to figure this out at some point. But at the very least, you know where all of the plastic is. It isn't mostly mixed into a bunch of stuff that could could be composted. That is actually totally fine to kind of throw outside. Um, what I'm saying is throw all of your trash that isn't plastic just outside. Just on the ground. Just out the window, you know, old yeah. school. Uh, Preferably in a neighbor's so. yard. Yeah. Preferably your worst neighbor, right? Well, I mean, you, well, you're not going to do it Garbage to your nice fight. neighbors, so. Yeah, maybe it's like a, a friend thing, like, you know. Yeah. You just like do it to each garbage. other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I heard you like, like a gesture. Fits. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I knew that could take us another 40 minutes because I now also have like five thoughts in the ether, but it has been an hour. Right. Yeah. So. Mostly, yeah, a lot of a lot of that. But um, I guess you mean to bring out our GM for the night and head back into the land of uh, Josh's Atlantis. So he set the song off, but he's not dancing. He hasn't turned his mic on yet. I never do. That's why. That's true. Wanna, you never do. I, I don't want to disappoint you preemptively, so I just wait till the moment to disappoint you. <laughs> this wait. The five videos revealed you, you what finally, was on the background you, a little you bit more. Saw that? I, I was going to. Uh, <laughs> I was distracted. I was we need it. another video. Please open another video uh, no, no, for just okay, a moment. Because, I, because <gasps> I, I think now that we're here, before we get this all. Uh, so set up. I think I can finally reveal what the back image is. I'm gonna turn us all off. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was very topical to the um, to the conversation. And you just had right that in the, the back bill. pocket. I I I I always have stuff like that in the back pocket. Right. He knows us um, so well. I know, right? It's a much like, tighter back to- pocket than Kelly's, otherwise it would have leaked out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you see, you see, the sign of a good producer is to always have, always a have something like that. on your pocket, so that yes. it looks like a butthole. Yes, that is exactly you wipe the where I was going with get. that. Uh, well, you know, you just, uh, you get a nice, nice pair of sweatpants, and uh, you go from there. You know, you, you steal that. And, uh, you know, you have a nice pair of sweatpants after there. Uh, but yes. Yeah, see, con- um, contrary to popular belief, the sign of a good producer is, producer is not to have the clearest audio. <laughs> look, look, producer look. sounds like a dog that does production, though. It'd be really cute. <laughs> producer. It reminds uh, me, and this will out me a little bit, but um, it reminds me of the Pokemon Bidoof, which is my least favorite. Oh, yeah. It's a terrible name. Uh, it's, I mean... Pokemon. It's the worst Pokemon from one of the worst generations, so... It wasn't great, but, you know, they improved, Uh, so that's all that matters. Yes, yes. But anyways, uh, we should probably get started on this uh, Atlantean adventure. So, uh, it seems that um, due to co-host and other such things, we're actually going to have a full new cast here today. So I'm definitely going to need you all to introduce your characters... Uh, we're gonna start with our uh, our really zoning out uh, co-host here, Kelly. Uh, let's what do you let's mean zoning out. <laughs> you're just looking really intently into the camera right now. I was <laughs> being very thoughtful, and I was going to quietly sneak into the Discord. Uh, and oh wait, no wait, Sarah, can you see our the private chat that's here? Or is it just for the people that are not guests? Oh, I can see it it's popping it. up. Oh, you can see it. Oh, I should just written in there. Uh, if you wanted to do the interpisson, but oh yes, yes, I, I was actually going you to you have to warn me. What? An intermission, oh, if bathroom, need be. Bathroom break. Oh yeah, no, I w- I would take a pee break. All right, okay. so before I'll we get started, never turn down a pee break. We should probably do that then, as soon as I there it is. All right, so yes, in uh, we'll be back in a little bit for Atlantis Adventures, and we're back. Are we doing costume changes? Is uh, that what I just, happened? Oh. I was just feeling so intensely weird about my extremely preppy shirt that was originally part of my cowboy costume. And 
I realized like three quarters of the way through the interpiss in there that I was like, oh shit, I could just go change the shirt. And then I would, didn't make it back in time. That's okay. Only one person made it back in time. Oh, uh, hell yeah, Pit Vipers. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, okay. We can't get off on tangents, but can you explain the Pit Vipers bit? What's the, like... <laughs> I don't even know how to explain the Pit Vipers bit. Um, um, I don't, uh... I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I get hyper fixated on things. It doesn't happen... Viper fixated. Usually, usually when I get hyper fixated on something that lasts about, like, three months, and then I get bored, and it's just, like, gone. It doesn't matter anymore. Um... But every once in a while, it's it's pretty intense. The last time it was this intense was probably with whale. Like whales has been just a thing that I didn't think about my entire life. I just knew that I liked them, and now I have like whale tattoos all over. I own a bunch of whale shit. There's whale shit behind me right now. Um, Pit vipers is like they didn't replace whales, but they like joined the pantheon of things that I am just. Just kind of shit on. wild about, yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine combining them. I no, I think about it all the time. Trust me. <laughs> um, but they're nice sunglasses, and the company seems pretty chill. So that's a yeah. good start, then. Yeah, it feels like an okay thing to kind of obsess over. There, there are less ethical things to obsess over. Yeah. Pit vipers regularly will find out that like. Um, there are like right wing assholes who will wear them to rallies, and when Pit Viper sees that happening and gets like gets made aware of it, they will donate the money that like is the cost of that pair of glasses to trans organizations, like trans rights organizations. So that's well, pretty even better then, yeah. even better. Yeah. 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 All right. So to pivot completely hard into this game now, uh, I still do need character introductions because not only, like I said, is our guest character new. But the entire cast at this point, which put me into a bit of a tizzy last night while I was rewriting stuff. Uh, so, yes, we'll start with our uh, co-host today. Uh, if you could introduce your new character, describe them and, you know, all that fun stuff. Kelly. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could have you could have told me I can't make a new character. I could have said that, but I'm the I am the GM, not the dictator of the game. That's fair. OK, well, the. The long and short of it is that um, there seems to be a pattern between the v various games we've done where my character always ends up being kind of like a useless, selfish piece of shit, which it probably was nothing to read from. into there. But I, I feel like this one in particular was just, he just sucks. He honestly was just, he's just not a fun character. So uh, he is just gone. He's vanished. I mean, he actually did. He figured out his venture capital ven uh, venue and just departed. Well, yeah, so he did leave the party because he was having an extremely racist moment where he was uh, sent into a panic uh, by our par one of our party members who was uh, a visible minority and his character was canonically racist. So he he ran off and then he got into a terrible adventure and I just don't think we need to come back to him. So instead, uh, we have uh, an octopus named Ellen Mollusk. That's uh, Ellen spelled E-L-L-O-N. And uh, going hard in the other direction, uh, Ellen is just insanely helpful. So Ellen's background is uh, Ellen roams the land helping strangers in need. Nice. Robin yeah. Hood. Yeah, like Why? I feel like <laughs> Ellen is exactly the person that I would say Ellen DeGeneres wants to portray herself as. Oh, Just no. like bubbly and everyone's friend and like not hanging out with George Bush and stuff like that. So yeah, uh that that's that's Ellen Mollusk. And uh oh yeah, my unique talent is uh my distributed nervous system. So, you know, my arm is like equally has its own brain kind of thing. And uh I guess that would make me more reactive, you know? Somebody throws something at me from behind and the arm just goes, wah! What if your, like, arm... What if each limb had its own personality, too, right? Because they're all individually sentient. 
Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that would be a disaster. Like, really lecherous tentacle. You have to constantly like hold back. You're, you're like, <laughs> bro, bro, consent, bro, no, consent. No, no. no. <laughs> I mean, it'd be easy to get into that character because I do already have one very lecherous tentacle. So. <laughs> Ayo. It's his Born under punches after dark. <laughs> Uh, Except in right. Hawaii, where it's currently the middle of the day. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very warm. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Page, page. We can't talk about this, ears. but like, what is it like living somewhere warm? Oh my god. Okay, no, it's moving very on. Very sweaty. It's unusually wet. Also, it was plus forty here last year. We live somewhere warm now. Fucking kill me. Mm -hmm. I'm like somewhere in the middle, and it's still too warm most days. But anyway, um, my character. I've made a dog. Who is, um, does not have any fur, but has, oh, well, that's the wrong. <laughs> nope, that's it now. That's the aquatic that's the, dog. That's the wrong, yeah, that's the wrong, um, window. Sorry, this has taken a long time. Okay, so a dog with, um, sea grapes instead of fur and has a tentacle tail that is prehensile. So we've got nine tentacles so far. We might increase. Nine tentacles yeah. thus far, and uh -huh. uh, apparently no name for your character. Uh, there is a name. I think uh, name is Dagwood, but replace the W with the D, so it is Wagdud. Wagdud, okay. Yeah. All right. Waggood? What? No. Unique talent? Because then you could be like Waggood by name, Waggood by reputation. <laughs> yeah, I believe there was a special talent that you included in your character page. It was the prehensile tail. So it's like that... I'm a dog, but I have an arm and a hand. Oh no, it was um sorry, it's the the tentacle acts kind of like the prognoctopus, like it gravitates towards things that will win. I don't know. It was like a sort of like truth finding tentacle, I guess. Yeah, similar to like the uh, oh, the the whole. Truth. But. Well, the sort of like when you put a fucking chicken on a lotto ticket kind of deal where it's like, yeah, it heads towards the right thing every time. Exactly. There's definitely redneck shit that does stuff like that. Please don't question my background. I okay, that. we can't get into tangents. You're going to have to tell me about that later. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, our guest's character. Yeah, my character's name is Billiam. Um, they, them. I, they look like, like, you know, Mae Whitman? Um, she was in Scott Pilgrim. She was like the one female ex. She's also Anne, her from Arrested Development. Anyway, it's just sort of a, like uh, a fairly short human with like kind of kind of like strong looking. Um, uses they them pronouns, but like kind of covered just covered in shit. Kind of like Davy Jones's crew from Pirates of the Caribbean. So just like too many barnacles and like kelp just kind of stuck everywhere. But that's it. Nothing like. Good. Just, just, it's an Mostly aesthetic. humanoid? Just... Yeah. Yeah, humanoid. Just annoying, yeah. basically. Um, That's fair. They, so their unique talent is related to their career path. They wanted to go to med school, but then they realized science is actually kind of really hard. And so now they're a doctor of chiropractic instead. Um, so their unique talent is that they can, they can cure almost any illness by like trying to pop your back, but there's like a three in four chance that they just kill you. And then it, it doesn't actually work in creatures that don't have a spine. Atlantis was not the best place to start this business. I mean, <laughs> there's a diverse set of a life there, but I can see why you'd run into problems. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. I guess so. it's a bit of a trade off because it sounds like it would, it would be less effective on an octopus, but it would also be less fatal, right? Yeah, I could try it, mm. but it's not gonna. It won't kill you. Okay. But it's a good scam, I guess. I mean, much like chiropractic. <clears throat> what? I'm a oh. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Next, you're gonna tell me a naturopologist or whatever they call themselves. <laughs> Naturopath. Naturopath. Well, it's like how I don't they say that Look, chiropractic. I don't pay attention chiro to fake doctors. Oh, I have a doctorate. I have a, I have a piece of paper that says it is a doctorate. Hell yeah. So you're better than a chiropractor. No, I mean the character, not me personally. Oh. <laughs> uh, no. uh, all right. Anyway, so um, we had a side adventure last time, so I'm just going to back us up a little bit and remind us what's happening. So we're in this sort of like um, the Ragnarok stage of our adventure right here. The, like Everything just seems to be going wrong. The actual dome 
city of Atlantis seems to be rising out of the sea on giant mechanical legs, and it is just anarchy everywhere right now. So the three of you find yourself in the central park of Atlantis. And we're going to start with um, Billiam here. Uh, you are in the park for reasons that I'm not going to try to explain right now. You're just at the park because, you know, parks are dope. Uh, support your parks. Uh, and you've seen a middle-aged looking fella who looks a bit like a fake doctor laying prone on the ground. Looks to be dead, but you can sense. You can sense that he's not dead. He is mostly dead. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna so try to is, pop his back. You're gonna try to pop his pop his back. All right. Yeah. So let's start with the let's start right off with the body I took roll an oath. here. It's not the Hippocratic yeah. oath. It's like the <laughs> knockoff version it. of that. But, but, I but took you it. took an oath. <laughs> That's right. All right. So I'm gonna get you to roll two d sixes then on your body there. I rolled a nine. A nine. So you got eleven. So with a satisfying pop, you hear that back set properly. Yes. And this old, withered-looking man opens his eyes and looks at you and claps your hand and in a very... a voice that sounds like he's about to tell you how to get real. He says, My name is Dr. Phil McCracken. I don't actually remember if that's Nicole's character's name. I remember Phil, and that's it. Or Gil. No, Dr. it's Gil. Dr. Oh, it's Dr. Phil McCracken. Gil Phil McCracken. Dr. Dr. Gil... Dr. Gil. No, it was Dr. Gillup McCrawfish. That's what it was, yeah. Gil McCrawfish. <laughs> Phil McCracken is funnier, but only in this context. Nicole would hate me. He was Anyways. so close to close to death yeah. that he forgot his own name. Yeah, he forgot his own name. He's like, Dr. Gill, and I need you to know that as an Atlantean ranger, I have failed at my duties. But you still have time to save this city. It's time for you to understand what your purpose in life is. I need you, I need you to find the other two. His hands shaking, like he's not got much left in this world. So I need you to put on the super suit and save the world. What's the super suit look like? You ever watch Wait, Power Rangers? Did you explain Rangers? the Rangers to Sarah at yeah. any point? Yeah. You, ever, you yeah. ever watch Power Rangers? Well, okay, which color Power Ranger am I going to be? That's a very good question. What color of Power Ranger are you going to be? It's up to you. That, that doesn't feel like how Destiny is supposed to work. Well, you know what? <laughs> Destiny's a giant crock of shit. So Your Destiny's <laughs> in your hands. It was in your hands all along. All right. I'm only cool with it. I never actually, like, I barely remember Power Rangers. So I'm going to assume there's nothing, like, really awful about being the purple ranger because I, I just want to be a purple one. No, I'm pretty sure the worst things they did was, like, stick the Asian in person the yellow in a yellow ranger, suit yeah. and yeah. the black what person in the black suit. As far as purple goes, I don't think there's a lot of homophobia in Power Rangers, so I think we're good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, all right, all right purple, the right there we go. I'll do it if I can be the purple ranger. Hell yeah, there you go. Um, so you feel... Also, we are legally distinct from Power Rangers anyway, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, legally... This is Atlantis Rangers, completely separate from Power Rangers. It just looks a lot like it. Don't Google. Um, <laughs> don't. You feel... <laughs> You you feel all of a sudden like like there's a power inside you and a burst of light happens and a suit starts flying towards you, like gravitationally pulled towards you. It's horrifying. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and you know that that is your super suit. And uh, with a flash of light, all of a sudden... You're dressed, and you feel the power coursing through your body. And then Dr. Gill, instead of passing away like it was sort of implied, he just kind of gets up and dusts himself off and just kind of walks away. He's like, well, my work here is done. Yeah, I was through the magic of chiropractic medicine. It, it was impressive. It was very impressive. All right, so that's where we're starting at right there. So because I have to make all these people come together now in the name of plot... We're going to move over to, uh, I really wish you would have sent me your character's name page because I've already forgotten it. Oh, I sent Why it in you? the ch chat. Uh, you just said your character is a shaggy dog. Right. It's, um, oh, well, there it's we like, go. it's Dagwood, but with the D and the W. Yeah. Oh, like all when right. you switch there them, it looks yeah. like Wag Dude, but it's Wag, Wag. Yeah, there we dude. go. There we go. So, 
Yeah. Why, that one. dude? Why, dude? Did you have like an owner yeah, well, or something before? Are you, you an individual unit? Um. Have you, have you lived on your own power? My owner is is uh, one of those uh, people that just kind of lets their dog wander all the time, like no leash ever, really. Kind of. Uh, the responsible like, pet owner. Yes. We're we're equals more so than like I pay a bit of rent. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. Very responsible yeah. then. How do you make oh, yeah. money? With my tail. I make predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Gambling. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So, after a productive day of uh, fortune telling, you um, find yourself in the park when the uh, the shaking and the, the city lifting up and all that uh, appears to happen. And... Uh, Without any regard for your own health and safety, you sense through the power of your tail that you need to head towards the brightly dressed purple person in the center of the park. Covered in barnacles and kelp, smelling like Yes, yes, tide. yes. <laughs> just, just reeking of flotsam yeah. right now. I yeah. want to sniff that, so I go that way. And the tail <laughs> All right, is... all right. I mean, that, that does check out for dogs. I had a dog that rolled yeah. in dead stuff all the time. Yeah, I, sniffed that. Yeah, I would be, I would attract a lot of strays. Yeah. So, yes. You, you, didn't you I approach... warn you that we use the Atlantean F slur? <laughs> the flotsam, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, you've you've come up to this, uh, this person you've never met before wearing a bright purple suit. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the tentacle is like, like patting, touching you, patting yeah, you. I definitely have an aversion to things that don't have bones in them. Nice. So <laughs> I am like, not really loving that. The rest of me has bones. Yeah, the rest of you is fine, but the back end needs to like keep its distance. Okay. It does its own <laughs> thing. I have no control. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Okay, um, but I'm sniffing. Please. I'm sniffing around and like kind of like circling you a little bit. <laughs> pronouns for wag dude um he him okay sir sir please can you get your tail out of my space i'm dealing with a lot <laughs> and i back away a little bit tail All is right, still like pointing that. at you but it's not over in the shoulder. area yeah just pointing okay. okay well i'm still trying to figure out like where did my clothes go that i was wearing before the suit confirmed itself to my body and like that weird doctor guy told me there were two other people, but then he just left. I'm confused. I'm being sniffed and tentacled by a dog. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I sit down, and I just kind of bark once. Hey, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, look! Hey, look! Oh my god! Guys, what's going on over here? What's going on over here? Is this dog bugging you? Uh, I run over to you and start sniffing around your feet, and the tentacle is also patting you. I'm trying not to show my like visual disgust at having so many boneless creatures around me. <laughs> um, uh, it's been a weird morning. There's this doctor guy. I thought he was dying. So I did medicine, actual med real medicine. All right. Medicine that is proven by a sort of science on this doctor looking person. And then this suit appeared. I don't know what else to say about this. I'm very confused. Do you know what's up with the robot legs on the city? There's a lot going on. I don't, but I would love to help. What can I do? I literally do not know. I just told you I am very confused right now. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think the first thing we should do is we should, we should, uh, oh God, what's the most helpful thing we should do? We should go see someone who knows, uh, what they're, what they're doing. Maybe somebody in charge. Maybe there's police around. I love the police. Maybe we should track down that hobo looking doctor guy. <laughs> oh, that's like one too. I answers. love hobo doctors. <laughs> As soon as you said hobo doctor, I'm kind of taking this into my own ha own hands, Josh. But you can like take control of the tail whenever. But I'm assuming that like it would start. Well, he's not a character. Kind of he can't directing. grab the tail. No, yeah, no, no. Um, no, he can't grab it. I'm just saying like he knows where God. it's gonna where it's gonna be well, going. We're gonna we're gonna get you to roll on this just to make sure your tail completely gets it. So uh, if you could roll me a, a two d sixes, please. I've only got one, so I'm gonna roll it twice. All right. Is that bad for him? Don't forget the first number. And a six. Four to six so for ten, ten plus two, ten. so twelve. Yeah, oh, wait, so no, sorry. Is that for no, understanding? It is, it is for understanding. 
Sweet and so your that tentacle doesn't just like know where it's going. It points. It like contorts into an arrow, like some sort of cartoonish shit, like pointing. You need to go that way. Nice. Yes, I thank you for understanding <laughs> my hand gesture. <laughs> Uh, I'm hating every bit of tentacle action, but I do want to figure out where that doctor is and how to get you two away from me. So let's follow the tail. I, I really hate to, you know, table talk here or, or metagame or whatever the, the bad thing is, but do all three of you only have one six sided die? Yeah, I'm using uh, and I'm using. Yeah, I know. I use I use a Google program. Why, do, you, do you want me to mail you some? I have so many. Like <laughs> I'm in the process of moving, and my other set of dice is not here. Okay. I think my partner Sorry, has a bunch, but he's in Let's another continent, so it's his fault. Yeah, yeah that happens. Uh, all right, so yeah, you guys uh, are heading in pursuit of the uh, the hobo doctor that departed after giving you absolutely no stage advice whatsoever. None. None. Very confused. Very purple right now. That's yeah. It's a good look for me, but it's just not what I but was prepared yeah, for. You, you know, you're going out today, and you're expecting just to you know vibe in a park, and all of a sudden you're wearing a pink or a purple suit. Pink suit is our uh, floating uterus character. My apologies. Uh, that's canon. Uh, so <laughs> after a bit of walking, you guys spot him, and he appears to be trying to um, harass a down on his luck. Um, I don't want to say beggar, a homeless person, um, who appears to not want anything to do with him right now. You keep hearing the words get real over and over again. Like that's his only slogan he has. Um, wait, wait, okay, wait. so we've come across a unhoused person in this, uh, I guess in the Atlantis dome, maybe you're a domeless person, but... The, yes. So we've we've come across this person who's had a rough go, who sounds just like Doctor Gill, but we also no no, no. Doctor Gill is harassing this person, telling him to get real. Okay. No. Yeah. I, I feel you now. Yeah. 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 No, he's just telling this un un unhoused person to get real over and over again. Okay. okay. Well, um, I think we should approach him. I want to know where where my clothes went because they're not underneath this leotard. It is very tight. <laughs> And also, he owes me because that was actually a very expensive procedure that I did. Um, so let's go. Let's go talk to him. Going to confront him. Um, actually, the the octopus who I haven't actually formally introduced myself to. Um, I'm Billiam, by the way. Uh, you want to be helpful? Could you just go ask that doctor like where my clothes went and where's my money? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, thanks, uh, Billiam. That's a great name. My name's Alan. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay. Well, you you just want me to go get your stuff back? Sort of. Yeah, I, I can do that. I, I want to walk up, or no, I guess I float up to. I swim. Yeah, up. you sort of like wriggle float? over there. Yeah, sort of flop around a bit. Oh, I mean, yeah, I kind of just like wiggle along the. I do this. Up <laughs> to. Up to Doctor, right. up to this person. Do I know that? Do I recognize them? Oh yeah. Uh, well, no, you actually wouldn't because uh, Smegma Glands is gone now. So. Right. Okay. That's uh, right. You you think you've actually? Uh, could you roll me um a uh, an understanding, please? Yeah, I can roll. Do you want me to roll right now? Yes. Or in like a second. Like as in now. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I just just in case you want to do something first. No, 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 this is good. You get your dice cam here. Ten. Oh, All right. Ten. ten. And wait, what's wait, your wait, what am I rolling? Under yeah, that's a ten. That's a ten? It's just a flat zero? I can't find your stats right now because... Yeah, I it's zero. Them. Okay. Um, here, look, so, I'll just put the stats on there. Ah, oh, there we go. I can <laughs> almost read that. Yeah, am I helping? Yeah. I'm just... No. I love helping. <laughs> the character uh, so, is just like my real personality. Ellen recognizes this uh belligerent doctor man from television you you've you've seen him on the television before while you're sitting at the laundromat washing i expect your eight socks oh hey hey you're the tv guy hey dr gill dr gill dr gill okay. are you helping him get real well you know like um i kind of uh i found myself unemployed after i uh 
I, uh, I, I threw off this uh, ranger, was, I mean, gave it to the next generation. And so I'm trying to reinvigorate my practice again. You've seen me from television. Do you need an autograph? Yeah, yeah. Are you you're doing a whole new thing? Like you got on a whole new voice too. That's so cool. Yeah, this one is like this one is more gravitas. I think I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you wanna? Oh, oh man, I have the worst ADD, Doctor Gill. I I need to get real. I know you. That's what you've said is the cure. But okay, so what did? Oh, what what did they need? I think they yeah. I think they want an autograph. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's get this autograph. <sighs> <laughs> and I, I hand over I hand over my character sheet to get autographed. All right, all right, all right. So with a flourish, Dr. Gill writes his autograph and then stares at you expect like expecting something. So uh do you plan on paying me for this autograph? That's usually why I do this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're gonna love this. I can pay you in ink and I just like ink all over. <laughs> <laughs> I want right, to sniff right. that, so I'm bounding yeah. uh, forward. Yeah, you're uh, heading towards just that. Sniff. All right, that, yeah, that's good sniff. stuff. That'll fill your fountain pens for days. Okay, okay. Thanks so much, Doctor Gill. I love I love all your work. I think there was something else supposed to ask you, but uh, uh, I, I can't remember. And then I, I just excitedly, almost like a, a bounding puppy dog, I bound back over to Billiam, and I'm like, look, <laughs> look, look. You you see an ink stained piece of paper that you cannot derive anything from anymore. Was this wasn't what I was wearing before the suit happened? Oh. Wait, I think I got confused. What am I supposed to do? It, it, I'll get it's it. Fine. I it, no, it's I'll fine. Get it we'll, just, we'll just go back to you. where'd the dog go. I am sniffing Doctor Gill. <laughs> so yeah. hard. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I feel responsible for these two, but I do at this point. And also, I yeah. really do at least want my clothes back because I think I left a bus pass in there and I need to get that's, out of this city, probably. That, that's that's fair. That's fair. So let's. I'm just going to go over and try to talk to Dr. Gill, who I assume is now covered in ink and still like harassing yeah. this person. Well, now he's sputtering a little bit because he's trying to get like, you know, when you you suck on a pen before you start writing and it actually just blasts a bunch of ink in, in your mouth. He's you trying to ink deal blasted, with that. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's just dealing with that right now. He's like, <laughs> these. I'm mul- helping him by licking <laughs> his face. <laughs> I'm not paying you for this. I'm not paying you for this. Um, I hear that, and I'm like, "Whoa, I, so I, stop hey, I saved down. your life. You better oh. pay me for this." <clears throat> yes, you. Um, future. He tries to affect like a dramatic tone. The new generation of Atlantean Rangers. I think I like a park ranger. I didn't apply for this job. You, you see, he's trying to like. Actually, if you could roll understanding first, we'll see if you can perceive what he's trying to do right now. Well, my understanding is not good. No, I got a four. You got a four? Yeah. Okay. You think that he's speaking earnestly when he says this? Okay. Okay. Yeah. You, the prophecy has spoken that. The danger to this city would be stopped by three young heroes of the new generation. As you can see by my withered figure here, I'm too old to continue on the legacy of the Atlantean Rangers. And are pretty frail looking. It's, I've only got a few more get reels left in me, to be completely honest. <laughs> but with your two companions here... I feel you can stop the threat that the president of this city has brought in his wild desire to let this city open up to venture capitalism and property speculation. I'm not entirely sure I'm following these two are my companions. I am barely holding in dry heaves every time I look at the amount of boneless tentacles behind me. I, it, it might I, I be can, difficult. I can make my tentacles harder if you like. Look, and I had to make them really rigid. They're really bony. They're like eight big, big boners here. Is that better? I think I treated a kind of... I, like edge, I edge closer to Billion. Is this better? Is this better? Like, kind of like full body yeah. dry heaves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know this will be a struggle. I know that you are all scared, but I believe that soon 
you will understand your purpose in this great tapestry of this story. He is. What do we do with the suits? He's edging away as he's saying this, like he is trying to make a break for it. Do they get suits? Am I the only one in purple? Arr, arr. <laughs> you just have really to cover them up. <laughs> <my help. laughs> you just need to fall into destiny, and then their suits will appear. He is turned around. He is booking it at this point. He's yelling over his shoulder as he's. <laughs> Bill, Billy, am I get the sense? I, I, I'm real sorry. I get the sense you want me to cover up. Your, your dry heaves are looking like wetter than usual. Like, is there some kind of way that I can? <laughs> It's fine. It's know. fine. I'll just I just need to breathe deeply through my nose for a second here. Just, <laughs> mm. just let me take a break. Ugh. Um, I still don't know what's happening. I have a suit. You guys are related to the suit. The dog seems to know what's going on. Arr. Um <laughs> Does the dog yeah, have a collar? The dog. I love dogs and I like pet the dog with like let's say four of my tentacles. <laughs> nice. Or tentacle hug. I am licking I'm, one at a time. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get you Billiam to roll a body roll here. Okay. Uh, I, roll, I rolled a six plus you two. Rolled a six? Eight. Could be worse. Okay. You are just able to keep the contents of your stomach inside. Excellent. Yes. So I live my life. <laughs> just just barely able to keep it down. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Alright. And uh Wag Dude. You're Wag Dude now. Um, I don't know if that was the original pronunciation, but I'm doing it that way. Uh, I need you to roll another understanding. Seven. Seven. Plus two for nine. So nine. You are momentarily distracted by your li- uh, from your licking of the tentacles. Because you notice your tail appears to be giving out another prophecy. It starts to draw in the soft ground of the public oh, park. This is this is new. I don't. Th- I'm surprised by this. I don't. It hasn't <laughs> spoken yet. So it starts drawing, and it says, "Run to the center of the park, and there you will find your key to saving the city." Oh, I can't read. Oh, so yeah, <laughs> that's fair. I have no idea what it says. Well, how are the literacy rates of uh, Ellen and <laughs> Billiam? My understanding. Oh, I can read. I love zero, to read. So middling. Uh, middling. All right. So I'll get you both to roll understandings then. To see if you're literate enough to read this very prominent <laughs> message. They can read I it. Roll the two. They can oh. read it. <laughs> can they understand? Nine. What did Ellen get? I got a nine. You got a nine? All right. Well, I'm glad one of you can read. Uh, you can see what I got. You got the little grayed out. This is why I went still. to like oh. chiropractic doctor school and not go to doctor school. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So while, uh, while Billiam is sort of scratching their head, not entirely sure how to proceed here, Ellen realizes that the note is telling them to run to the center of the park. <laughs> I run to the center of the park. I will. I will cautiously walk after these two. All right. I, I'm bounding around, following. Have you, uh, Ellen? Have you ever uh, watched one of the 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 Batman movies where like he's got all the different costumes, like those glass cases, in case he's yeah. gotta go like in '90s mode for whatever reason? Um, Retro night at the club. Exactly. Uh, you see. In front of a small pod, two glass cases with colors of suits that I don't know yet, because I actually forgot to ask you guys what colors you want for suits. So, all right, we got a crimson red. Uh, I expect that's what it is. All right, a burgundy kind of deal. And Ellen, if you were to have a super suit color, what would it be? Um, I think, God, what would Ellen like? Um... Uh, to be friends with George Bush. Yeah. So I think what we, I think Ellen, uh, I think Ellen should have the, the white suit and not because we're rehashing. (laughs) We already, we already made the, the joke in the first episode, 
but because I think it really uh, sets us up well for me, like accidentally soiling it with ink. That's it fair. That, that's, that's a good bit. That's a very good bit. All right. So, um, upon looking at the glass cases, they begin to vibrate and large cracks appear in the glass and the suits burst out of there. And despite looking humanoid when they first, appeared in the glass case, they appear to reform themselves to fit over your freakish non-humanoid bodies. So and mine looks like one of those... just got, like, barnacle lumps <laughs> all over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, like, a piece of kelp just poking just through, like, like a seam. Yeah. 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 The fucking neck seam or something like, like that. It's got, like, a boob window, but it's just, like, barnacles and kelp. <laughs> but, yeah, <there's> kelp <laughs> spurting out of it. You're just, like, showing off your barnacle cleavage? Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, um, the suits have now since attached themselves. And as soon as they finish wrapping themselves around the two new rangers, you hear a booming voice all around you, like it's inside your head. And it goes, chosen ones. I hear it simultaneously throughout my distributed neural network. Not yes, yes. Body. Yeah, you're getting like nine voices at once here. Which oh, is yeah. probably not doing well for your like all no all factories knows. Um, yeah, it's ruining my sense of smell. There's I so mean, much audio input, I just can't smell shit. You can't smell shit. You uh, yeah, your audio senses are just being overwhelmed right now by this. Uh, actually, roll a body right now to see if you can even comprehend what's happening because it's <laughs> Me? all happening. Yes, because there's so much just stimuli at once. Uh, that's an eight plus two. All right. Uh, so yeah, you're able to just like restrain yourself enough that you can you can still understand the words though being like overwhelmed by all the the noises happening at once. And it says, "Chosen one, you are the saviors of this city. The ones who came before have failed. Step into the pod in front of you, and." Accept your destiny as saviors of Atlantis. I'm just really confused because I don't remember signing up for any kind of like weird ranger lottery. So I'm not sure how <laughs> I was chosen. I didn't put my name down. I'm really careful about that. I get a lot of spammy e emails and you know you don't study your information very hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one thing they really teach you at chiropractic school is how to like very quickly like cut all ties with people around you. But it makes sense. It makes sense. You want to you go after new marks, after all. Right. I make an you don't want to be caught up in that liability. <laughs> I make an assumption that my uh, super suit will no longer... No, no, no. I'm, try... I'm, a, I'm a nice person trying to be helpful. Uh, <laughs> Billiam, Billiam, can I... Can I... Is, is it okay with the, that I touch you with my now-suited arms? Why? Because, I, I, I mean, you've been calling them tentacles, and I, you know, I, should, I, I don't want to be mean, but they, they, are, they are arms, if that helps. But why do you need to touch me with them? Oh, I, I was just going to pull you aside, but I guess I could do that verbally. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> okay, I verbally pull Is the dog going to overhear? Is that the I problem? I verbally pull Billiam aside. <laughs> I've got great hearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I honestly, like, my, my character is not even trying to not be heard. I just like pulling people aside because it makes them feel important. Okay. Okay. Bill, Billiam, I know, I know you didn't ask to be here, but I don't think any of us asked to be here. And but I think you're great. And I I'm think I'm gonna cut you off right now. I understand this is a very good motivational speech and you're trying to make me feel good, but I'm just accepting it at this point. There's too much weird shit going on. I'll step into the light. Let's just Yeah, it's fine. But don't touch me with the arms. Suited okay. or otherwise. Yeah, that's fine. I uh, you yeah, we'll we'll go ahead. Whatever you whatever you want. I'm in the pod and uh I guess not really wagging my tail because it has a mind of its own. But wait, I'd say waving your butt in an attempt to wave the tail, like you know, yeah, like when a black lab like goes stabilized. way, when the <laughs> yeah, black the lab is, is going way too all. hard. The butt is moving. Yeah. 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 Good idea. Good idea. Yes. Uh, <laughs> how big is the pod? It's it's uh, large enough to fit like five people. In okay. It, so okay, so a humanoid, a dog, and an octopus. They're gonna fit in pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. especially the okay. octopus okay. can apparently squeeze in any goddamn thing. Yeah. I, oh, and yeah, don't, wouldn't you like to know it? Um, I, <laughs> uh, I follow last because I kind of like slink forlornly and I like 
look at the prepared speech I had and I just kind of like tear it up really badly. <laughs> hope no one notices. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, you just, you, you, you don't want to push your, your bits on people. And then I like jam my <laughs> smile back on and I hop into the pod. I'm like, all right guys, let's go to adventure. <laughs> the, the pod seals behind you with a sharp hiss and the rumbling, while already very vicious as this city on the mechanical legs is slowly stretching towards the surface of the ocean, from the very bowels of the bottom of the sea, you see another crack appear, and a fist burst from this crust. And another giant mechanoid robot emerges from the crust of the earth, and the pod heads towards it. You have any comments while this is happening, or are you just kind of in shock? I don't know if I can see it. Is the front of the pod the big window? Like just like oh yeah, yeah. Totally... It's, a, it's, a, okay. it's like a transparent thing that how, just like how big is the robot? It looks to be almost as big as the city on its mechanical legs. That's quite. Oh large. wait, is it? That's ours. Well, the pod's headed it. towards it. Oh. Yeah. yeah, like, are we are we on autopilot here? Yeah, yeah, you can't control this thing right now. Okay. I'm really excited. <laughs> That's kind of why I was like, I, I, I'm just sort of assuming something exciting is about to happen because, like, th this pod has started moving itself. And, like, yeah. are there buttons? Are there are there things? Not at the moment. It looks like there's just, like, a, sing like a, a panel for you to lean on, but no buttons on it or switches or anything. Okay, I lean on the panel. All I'm right. trying to think about like it would probably have pneumatic devices, kind of like moving it around. I'm like that's kind of like bones and bone structures. So I'm like maybe, maybe I could get something. Out. Maybe I could work something out here. I might be able to pop this robot's back. You might, you might, be, able to, you might be able to pop this robot's back. Yeah, I might be able All to right. make a client out of this robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you head we towards, we jump into it. our like Mulan song. Just like, I'll make a client out of you. And... <laughs> yeah. Um. As you approach it, you see that in the chest of the robot, there is a hole that looks like it will fit the pod that you're in into that hole. Like an ovipositor. <laughs> are, are we certain? Are we certain that it's like aimed to that hole? Yes. So we're pretty stands. ovipositive? You're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and as it, as the pod slides into the hole... Oh man, this is a really erotic episode. <laughs> I'm sweating. You hear we're underwater, right? Yes. So this Everything's is a wet, this is a pretty wet yeah. hole that we're going into. This is a pretty wet hole that you're going into right now. All right, just yeah. sopping, <laughs> in fact. Um, you hear a sharp hiss as it connects to the machine, and the panel that Ellen is leaning on all of a sudden has a bunch of touch keys on it. Now I need you to roll a body quickly, Ellen. To see how fast you react to the fact that you're leaning on a bunch of touch buttons now. Oh, like they just emerged under me? Yeah, yeah. Like also they glow up. Like, like when you put, take, take your phone out of like um, sleep mode or something. All of a sudden you uh, can type again. Yeah, so I got a 8 plus 2 is 10. You got, you're getting really nice rolls today. It's actually very inconvenient for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even cheating this time. I know. The good character, uh, good rolls. <laughs> I guess. I mean, is that is that like a message for you, Kelly? Uh, no, I don't learn things. That's fair. I don't think any of us do, really. Uh, so, noticing that the, the buttons start glowing, you, you jerk up in time to pre prevent pressing any of them randomly. Okay. Yes. Um, so, okay, uh, can I look at the panel? Absolutely. Can you I have eyes. Like, discern anything from the panel? Roll an understanding. I have yes, my friend Sasha. two paws up on the edge of the panel. All right. Look, I'm looking I'm, at it. I'm hoping for a tail prediction. I'm now also feeling kind of competitive with Ellen for some reason, where I feel like they're <laughs> trying to take over this little group. So I'm going to roll yeah. under understanding too to see if I can devise anything. Hell, hell yeah. Let's do it up. So I see, see me standing at the panel and you're like, I know she's trying to understand it. I'm going to understand it harder. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh yeah if you can really hear understanding then um i got <laughs> a 10 10 plus zero 10 plus zero and you have 10 plus two right uh ellen 
No, it's a 10 plus 0. A 10 plus 0. Oh, man. Oh, wow. So okay. at, at the same time, you both understand that whoever presses the biggest button on the monitor gets to take the head position of this giant robot, and you both go for it at the same time. Well, I this feel like my arm gets there first because of my distributed neural network. It just goes before my brain can... Well, we'll find out with the body roll. But what if I ask you, like, while I am doing it, I'm like, oh, please don't. And because you really like pleasing people, <laughs> it would be very conflicting for you if I asked you not to do something nicely. <laughs> Ooh, that's a psych roll. Let's see if you... Actually, that's before we do the oh, body no. roll. Roll a psych roll to see if you can, like, play mind games like that. <laughs> no, it's a six minus one. Kind of five. All right. Um... Yeah, I'm going to say you so don't... So it's like a you, race you, between my <laughs> reflex to hit things and my reflex to help people. Yes. Yeah, but, but I was really unconvincing yeah, when I said yeah. it. So I said please, mm. but I clearly sounded like I was being a jerk. Yeah. If you could not do that, uh, kind yeah, of deal. Basically like, oh, uh, yeah. we... Uh, but yes, we'll get you both through a body roll here. Uh, you get a bonus, Ellen, because of your individual distributed neural network thing. Um, seven plus two, so I got nine. Nine. Uh, I can't see what the second die is because the volume bar is in the middle. Uh, I got a three plus. We well, can't see the other die. Uh, it's definitely a six. Yeah, sure. No, I got Don't. a three plus two. So five plus, and you have a plus two in body, or what do you have for body? I don't remember anymore. Ellen. Me? Yeah. With, no, plus two. Yeah. Three plus, plus two. two. Three plus two. Five. Okay, you got five overall plus bonus of six. Not bonus of six, but a bonus of one goes to six. And you said you got uh, what, William? I got a seven plus my uh, two, so I got nine. Yeah. All right. So despite your neural network theoretically being faster, Ellen, it for some reason got its wires crossed and couldn't hit it in time. So Wait, you said you were going to give me a bonus. I did. I gave you a plus one bonus there. Oh, that's still not enough. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, I'm not very smart, but I am, like, very stubborn. Mm. <laughs> so, you hit the button, and all of a sudden, a small hole appears mm. under you, and you drop down, and a pneumatic tube system, much like a mail delivery system in a building, brings you up to the head of the, um, of the mech. Uh, the two holes appear underneath Wagdude and Ellen, sending Wagdude to the legs... And Ellen to the arms. That is way appropriate, though. Yeah, I, right. yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alex, four Alex legs. Checks out. And he's got eight arms. <laughs> or yeah. she's got and you see, El, uh, Billiam sees a massive panel in front of them. Wagdid sees two levers that they should be able to grip even with their paws. And Ellen sees um, four individual levers. In front of them just just four levers four levers is there anything else or is there any buttons just those four levers all right uh so then i i put four of my arms like one on yeah. each lever yeah um and then i i put the uh, two of my other arms like behind my head to show how casual <laughs> yeah. i'm being yeah <laughs> and the other two are giving like the double deuce but it's like <laughs> i'm sticking out like one sucker on each Sounds good. So, how, oh yeah, I guess, how are you, how are you floating in the air? Uh oh, I assumed there was like water in this cockpit or something. I'm really there strong. I'm just holding myself <laughs> up. Like, <laughs> you're just holding yourself up by the levers. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, so that's what you're doing right now, Wag dude. What are you doing? Uh, sniffing. Yeah, definitely sniffing? sniffing everything. Yeah. You're sniffing. All right. All right. Get you to roll one more understanding roll then. Uh, good thing I'm a smart dog. <laughs> plus two, so that's three. <laughs> um, three plus two is five. I did a, I did a good roll. <laughs> your uh, your tail seems to have a mind of its own right now, and it grips one of the two levers and pushes hard on it. What? Now the other two, when that happens, you you feel the robot lurch forward on its right leg, and nothing else. Arp. <laughs> uh, I is like, is there anything in my cockpit that would indicate how to move the arms? There is a thick 
learner's manual that looks to be about 300 pages sitting beside the lever. And it says, okay. learning mecha arms for dummies. <laughs> Is there like a braille version? There's no braille version. Okay. That because that would make really good use of my extra arms. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Then uh, I I flip. Okay. I I take one of my free arms. Uh, my deuce flipping arms because I realized. Uh, I'm gonna drop both my both my deuces because I suddenly feeling hubris. Uh, <laughs> and I just grab the book and flip it open to like a random page, uh, just to see if there's anything I glean from one page. All right. If you could roll an understanding here. Uh, that's a seven. It's a seven? All right. You see a very basic diagram where you see the two outer levers control the uh, Y axes of the arms, per se, where it's like this, basically. And the two interior ones control the elbow movement like that. Okay. Uh, I start trying to think of math and like geometry and my head starts spinning, so I just jam them all forward. <laughs> Billiam, you see on one of the monitors that's in the head there. Yeah. You all of a sudden see the two arms of the mecha lunge forward with the fists detaching, um, with cables attached to them, I should note. And they swing towards the giant domed city that's stand starting to stand up and just deck it as hard as it can. And the city lurches back. And recoils. Um, do I have I some radio sort of like intercom Are we in system? radio contact with each other? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys I, have I'm assuming I can yeah. see, but nobody else can see. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. okay. Hey, uh, Billiam, did that, did that help? Define help. I think we're uh, fighting the city. Arr, arr. <laughs> so it turns out you can fight City Hall. Okay, and so I just, uh, I pull them all back and push them all forward again. <laughs> 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 The, do I have uh, any like controls or am I oh, just have, like all I can do is monitor? No, you have a shit ton of buttons. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I'm having a I'm trying to can you slow down here? I'm trying to whew, wipe and sweat off my brow. Well, <laughs> and barnacles just flying everywhere. Trying to figure out like trying to trying to figure it out up here. I got a lot going on. Well, I'm gonna get you to roll an understanding for me one more time. A uh, seven. A seven. All right, you see amongst all the dials and buttons and all that on your monitor, you see one giant red with with like the yellow and black stripes around it, like in case of emergency, red button. Yeah. I am deciding that not being able to find my clothing and suddenly being in a robot I'm not prepared for. Like, I basically have children that are also my own body, and I didn't sign up for this. This is an emergency. Um, so I slam the button. I'm not prepared for parenthood. You, yeah. All right. The uh, eyes of your robot uh, glow red. And... It's in the crypto now. All of a sudden... An explosion of light emerges from those eyes and strikes the dome, and there's a massive explosion. And that's where we call it for this week. I think we're doing good. I mean, you're fighting a city, which is wow, pretty dope. We, we, we knocked out the part of the city that plays the dramatic music. <laughs> All right, I forgot you have a... It was fucking... overrated. No, we don't have to. It's good. That's yes, it. We that did is... It. That's the uh, that's the end of today's uh, arc here. Yeah. So uh, we're we're hitting our time limit here. So um, I guess maybe quickly before we go, uh, if there was if there's I don't know maybe one takeaway people could take from today. If there's only one thing, Sarah, what would it be? Oh shoot, we talked about so much. Um, I think it's just that things can be unusually wet, and that's not inherently good or bad. It just is. Oh, okay. Let wet be wet. Yeah, just neutral on wetness, you know? Neutral on wetness. <laughs> neutral on Is that like wetness. the D and D alignment chart I I, I haven't studied yeah. yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. And the right right in the middle is just like neutral wet. <laughs>
just neutral wet. It's just like a glass of water. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know what chaotic wet is. It's <laughs> real messy. Perfect. Chaotic perfect. wet, chaotic dry, lawful, lawful dry, and lawful wet. <laughs> Let's go in turns in. Paige, what's the most important thing you learned today? Most important? Um, bouncing on the bed is not just for when you're young. That is important to know. Yeah. Yeah. Even very old people can have Mormon soaker bouncing fun. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, Kelly, um, what did you learn today? what I today? think we should do is we should... What? What, yeah, did, what did you, you learn? learn? Yeah, oh, come the on, most important away. thing I learned... <laughs> <laughs>